Now, let's put a pause over there and, of course, focus on the conversation which you have been waiting for, and that is on dyslexia. And like we said, most of you might know a little bit about it. Probably some of you are living with dyslexia, and some of you might have never, ever heard this term. So if you have never heard what dyslexia is all about, then not to worry, because that is what we want to focus on today. But most importantly, debunk all the myths surrounding dyslexia. And, of course, without further ado, introducing my panel, and, of course, on my immediate left is Thomas. Kyoko, who is a parent. How are you doing this morning? I'm oh, very fine. Karim Busana to the studio. And then we also have Nancy Munye, who's the founder of Rare Gem Talent School. How are you doing, Nancy? I'm very good. Karim Busana to the show. And then we also have Dolly Quinta Mungai, who's the founder DQM Foundation. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine, thank you very All much. All right. And of course, last but not least, we have Philip Ogola, who's a digital humanitarian. How are you doing this good, morning? Good morning. Karibu Sana to the show. And let me just start with you, Nancy, before we hear uh, Dolly Quinta as well as Philip's, um, you know, story as far as dyslexia and as well, Thomas, of course, who's here to tell us, um, you know, how you're helping your daughter, right? Uh, you know, who's living with dyslexia. So, Nancy, for you, let's just understand dyslexia. It in the simplest of terms, right? For the sake of those people who've never heard what dyslexia is all about. What exactly is it? Well, um, going to International Dyslexia Association uh, explanation, a person with dyslexia have average or above average IQ, mm -hmm. but has difficulty in reading, writing, and spelling, and sometimes comprehension pro uh, processing. Mm -hmm. So that is basically what it is. A person who is able to do everything else in terms of um, interaction with people, socialization, but when it comes to reading, mm -hmm. the person has difficulty in reading, writing, spelling, mm -hmm. and therefore cannot be able to get information that is printed. Yeah. And he could be having so much in his mind, but cannot be able to put it in print. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And you know, when you say difficulty in reading, and of course, again, comprehension also, mm -hmm. um, so I might say, yeah, but I mean, don't all children, you know, <laughs> struggle with the same? That is as far as reading is concerned. Like, what sets dyslexia apart from just a child who's having trouble reading? Well, um, a, a person with dys dyslexia or a child with dyslexia mm -hmm. takes longer than uh, necessary for him to be able to read, to be able to read and write, and sometimes longer that it is very worrying. Mm. So it is not so easy for a person with dyslexia or a, a, stu a student with dyslexia mm. to learn reading like um, quite a number of us. When you are introduced to alphabets and you are introduced to phonemes and phonics, mm. it's so easy to blend them and form words. Yeah. But for a student or a child with dyslexia, will not be able to blend the sounds or the phonemes to make words. Mm. So that's where the difference comes in. And in fact, he is also having difficult in explaining or knowing if it is B, how is it written? Mm. So having problem with phoneme uh, and the grapheme correspondence. Okay. So he knows B, but doesn't know how it's written. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, I've seen some people would tend to interchange, um, you know, the same. Well, that is one, yeah. but still not just that. Okay. You know, C is mm. K, but how do you write that sound? Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All so right. if you are not able to able, you are not able to write that, mm. then everything that is written, it is not communicating at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll come back to you in terms because I, I can see you have some materials. Um, you know, I'll come back to you. But let me speak to to Dolly Quinter, who again you're living with dyslexia, right? Um, let's go back to your childhood. You know, your first few years of school. I don't know if you can remember. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. um, life for me has been exceptionally, exceptionally great. I would say, mm -hmm. but. Um, in school, I really did struggle. Mm. I struggled in school, but my home life was great. But um, again, as Phyllis was saying, mm. that you take longer time to grasp certain information. Mm. So you could also be labeled as a child that is um, problematic in class, mm. the child that doesn't listen, mm. but it's just that we grasp information differently. differently. And um, the, the conventional way mm. of um, understanding things is not how we understand, mm. you know? Mm. So we have 
maybe 20 people and we expect these 20 people mm -hmm. to gather information that are exactly the same. You know, mm -hmm. if we all cook a certain recipe, mm -hmm. it's not going to taste the same. So mm -hmm. then we all expect when we teach children mm -hmm. or teach adults, the formula to be the same. Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit... Um, it's difficult. It's yeah, different, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay, so for you, um, you said you struggled a lot in, in school, right? Yeah. So in what areas did you struggle a lot? And, and, and paint that picture for us. Um, I would say, um, being an only child, I've always been a very outgoing child mm -hmm. and been raised by a psychologist. My mum's a psychologist. Mm -hmm. she, could, she noticed um, pattern behaviours that were just not right. Okay. So she noticed that if, um, if, for example, it was homework time, mm -hmm. I'd always have an excuse why I Both wouldn't do. want to do it. Yeah. Or if it was reading time, I would have a reason. But if it was anything else, You're excited I was excited, it. I wanted to do it. So mm -hmm. she just started to look at patterns and um, took me to an educational psychologist mm -hmm. and I, then I was diagnosed with dyslexia. But mm -hmm. prior to that, mm -hmm. I was teachers used to think that I had behavior problems, which I didn't. I just didn't <laughs> grasp didn't what was going on in class. Okay. All right. I'll come back to you in terms of, um, so fine, this is what the teachers said. This is how, um, again, you behaved as well. And, and it was difficult for people to understand why I'm too just like any other child, which is one of the things that we hear a lot amongst teachers. Why can't you just be like all this, this other um children or learners. Okay. Um, Philip, for you, um, again, living with dyslexia, right? Let's go all the way back because like you said, a lot of people don't know that, um, that you're living with, with dyslexia. So let's go back to your early years, especially in, in school. What kind of student were you? Uh, <coughs> um, you know, I was literally diagnosed and I, I've lived all my life without knowing that I was, I was dyslexic. Uh -huh. uh, as a when child, were you diagnosed? Um, in 2021. 2021? Yeah. Okay. So you can imagine living all my life without knowing. Yes, without knowing. So um, my, as a child, I was that boy who was always in trouble. Okay. Um, um, like when you have dyslexia, your thinking is totally different. You mm -hmm. see things differently. As mm -hmm. in, I think in 3D. When I look mm -hmm. at something, I, 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 I see past, past, present, and future. Okay. And I actually look at, the, uh, at it from an artistic perspective. Mm -hmm. In a, my primary school, I was one of the, the top students. Mm -hmm. I was very smart. Right. But when it comes to doing homework, reading, I had trouble. Okay. I'm that guy who never used to do homework. At but all. I was just smart in class. Okay. So you find I was really labeled as stupid because I couldn't read. Mm -hmm. As in, when, when I look at a book here, I, I, I simply couldn't grasp. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had learning impairment. Mm -hmm. And that put me in trouble. Teachers labeled me as mjinga, stupid, you know. Mm -hmm. And even my, my fellow classmates used, used to laugh at me because I used to stammer a lot. Mm -hmm. So that really, uh, my primary school was, um, was, uh, was dogged with bullying. Okay. I was bullied a lot in school. Okay. Uh, secondary school, I, the bullying got worse. Because mm -hmm. now uh, it really got intense where I couldn't read well. Okay. But in everything else, I, I performed ex extraordinarily. And at times I was given a task, I would come with a different formula and come with, it, with the same answer, but I was put in trouble. Okay. So uh, the biggest challenge I think we have in a society, we don't understand the dyslexic kids. Um, like my family, my own family, my mom used to punish me a lot because I couldn't do homework. My dad, the same thing. Because mm -hmm. they never used to understand me because I'm, I'm one child who is very artistic, highly innovative, highly creative, mm -hmm. but I was beaten. I was like, can you focus on your classwork? Why are yeah. you singing? I had an interest yeah. in music. I had an interest in painting, in art, but I was punished. Mm -hmm. I was told, why can't you read like, like, like other kids? Mm -hmm. so, so I hated school. In fact, my, my secondary school at one point, I, I, I wanted to, do, to mm -hmm. drop school. Mm -hmm. I flunked in school. But look at me right now. Mm -hmm. I have achieved nearly so much, so much yeah. just because of my dyslexic thinking. Because mm. um, the beauty about this dyslexia, we can think above normal. As in, when other people see problems, we see solutions. Solutions, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. that's, that, that's what we are in, in, in a nutshell. Okay, yeah. all right. I'll come back to you in terms of what exactly did you struggle with? Because like you said, reading huh, was a bit of an issue. You never wanted to do homework, which is the same case as, as Dolly Quinter. And, and again, it's, I can understand why some people will just think, um, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> as compared to those ones who get excited as, as, as far as doing their homework. Okay, um, and then uh, Thomas. Um, right. So for you, um, of course, you're here on behalf of your of your daughter, yes, right? Take yeah, us through, yeah. um, you know, her journey as well. She's now what, fourteen? 
Yeah, she's 14, she's 14 years yeah. old. Okay. Um, can we just go back to her early formative years um, in school? What was she like? Um, and then we'll get to understand more as far as her journey as well. Well, uh, my daughter was a normal child, mm -hmm. very normal, mm -hmm. born, right weight, everything. But when she went to school, we had a problem. Like they're saying, she would rather do other things than read. She would rather go to the kitchen. She's a very good, good cook, by the way. Right, she loves, Yeah, she okay. loves cooking. She would rather go to the kitchen and cook and make a nice meal. I'd be surprised. She's like seven, eight years old and she can do all that. But now, her demeanor will change when it's time for homework. Mm. You're like, okay. Nadia, can you, it's time for homework. Yeah. She'll just change and say, can I make you an egg? Oh. Can I make okay. you coffee? Yeah. You know, everything cha would yeah. change when it comes to homework. But she loved going to school. Mm -hmm. She really loved being in school. Mm -hmm. She's very interactive. But now reading is where the problem where the was. Problem is, yeah, Bilona Sema too, like, you know, you start asking yourself, is my child okay? Is uh, we never pushed her to we never really focused on the reading so much because she's good on all other things. Um. But now the reading, the writing, mm -hmm. you can't even comprehend what she was writing at yeah. that time. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and of course, we also want to understand what exactly is, and then especially when it comes to reading, were there like letters that she struggled, um, you know, reading, and especially when it comes to writing, were there things that, she, um, you know, she also struggled with. But one thing that is common between all the stories is the fact that you're really good at everything else. Mm. But just the education part, no education, but reading, you know, and, and doing homework is where, is where the, the, the big issue is. And I can see a number of parents, so many parents out there who will be like, when it comes to, and this could be an indicator that a child is dyslexic, right, um, Nancy? Yes. Yeah. So what does exactly does then dyslexia look like, especially in the early formative years, um, you know, of a child? Well, uh, the very early thing or the red, uh, the red flag for a student or a person with dyslexia, mm -hmm. uh, before going to school, they could be having delayed speech. Okay. That is just one, but I always say that uh, having delayed speech is um, a sign to many other things, That's so it is not thing. just that. Mm -hmm. But then uh, for, some, uh, for a person with dyslexia, we will be identified at school okay. because that is where reading, writing, and spelling is done. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when you realize that uh, homework is not well done. Mm -hmm. And um, in class setup, they will mm -hmm. give excuses, as uh, Banadi has said. Mm -hmm. um, giving some work to do, they will, first of all, maybe they will start disturbing other students. And that's why they will always have raise problems with the teachers, because they are trying to avoid, and to avoid reading, to avoid writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, they don't want to show that uh, they are having that problem, so they would rather do other things to to camouflage, mm -hmm. like not showing exactly that they have this problem. They themselves also don't understand, mm -hmm. so it is really a very confusing situation between the teacher, between the parent, mm -hmm. and the child. And like everyone has said, mm -hmm. they're very good uh, outside the they class, have their critics, and uh, yeah. that's why also they will have problem with the teachers because we are doing very well outside the class, but when it comes to class, mm -hmm. you are either giving excuses, disturbing other students, mm -hmm. but uh, without uh, assessment to understand the reason why this person is doing this, mm -hmm. then the parent will also come uh, having conflict. My best child at home, like her daughter yes. is very good at home, yeah. then uh, the t at school is not doing well. So what do you think? Mm -hmm. The parent, the teacher are having conflict, mm -hmm. but they are having conflict because of a situation that they don't they understand. Don't understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um and so like you said, assessment has to be done most of the time it's usually picked um in, in school. But the question is, um aside from the fact that, you know, reading, writing is a bit of a challenge, is there any other symptom um, you know, that, that can be picked? Uh yes, mm -hmm. uh there are some children who do reverse of words when they are even speaking. Okay. So even if they have learned speaking they will mm -hmm. do reverse of words, mm -hmm. then this uh, sometimes they have, uh, as I said, delayed speech, mm. and uh, other times they, are play they have had information, mm. but they do not, they cannot be able to do two tasks 
at the, at same, the same time. time. Like you okay. send that child to do two things, mm -hmm. and then we'll always come back to ask you, what did you say? Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe there he will go counting what the, the, the things that they have been sent. Mm -hmm. But um, by the time they get to where yeah, they, but, <laughs> they yeah. could So forgotten. most of the time, yeah. if they come back uh, several times, and uh, this one is um, something that is within, mm -hmm. that yesterday or other times, when you come, the child comes back to it, like you don't hear. You know that this is something that is very very common with parents mm -hmm. why you are not hearing mm -hmm. but actually it is the processing of information that was not really complete the, the, yeah. so the child will always feel like uh, will give dive um, uh, dodge from getting back to you mm -hmm. to ask what did you say because yeah. every time they come to you it's like uh, the it's statement advice. is that you are not hearing yeah. and you are mischievous. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, I was watching a documentary about again children who who um, are dyslexic, and one of the one of the boys said, "I I forget everything. I, I would read something, um, but then again, forget it after a very very short period of time. So it was very distressing for him because again, so." Even in school, um, you know, you don't then know how to how to maneuver um, with the same. And of course, that aspect of you know name calling, they were called um, you know several names. But then again, do we know what exactly causes dyslexia? Yeah, the highest percentage of uh, dyslexia, cause of dyslexia, is runs in in the in the genes. So it's something that is inherited. Mm. But we still have secondary dyslexia, which is uh, acquired uh, because of other factors like uh, problem having uh, the child being born mm -hmm. and uh, other factors like uh, maybe having an accident, diseases. Mm -hmm. So those are just other factors, but the, the, the largest mm -hmm. cause of dyslexia is inherited. And that's why sometimes you find like uh, the child does not understand it. The child is very, very good. And when the, the assessment, during assessment, mm -hmm. the parent cannot actually touch. W did I have problem be giving birth? Mm -hmm. This child was born with a good weight yeah. and uh, the, the mass was okay mm -hmm. and everything was okay. Yeah. But uh, then before going to school, the child was very good. Yeah. But now going to school, mm -hmm. Things changes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and Thomas, would you say this is Nadia's case because, um, like you said, she was just born normal child. Um, you know, ideal weight, everything was okay until at around what four months? Yeah. Is when she had the pneumonia. Yeah, she had pneumonia, mm. and for the longest time, mm. we used to think she's ignoring us. Mm. So she had what we call a. Uh, uh, magic at katia maskio. You okay. used to hear that when you're growing up. When you go a magic or akili, you know, like True. these things happen. Mm -hmm. So for four years we used to go for these therapies and would go for speech therapy and it was really expensive because it's never covered in insurance. That's true. So you go for these speech therapies and you pay like eight thousand every week. And then she's not getting better. Mm -hmm. So one time she was, they put her down and they checked, they realized she had ears be water between her ears because when she was four months, she was diagnosed with uh, pneumonia. pneumonia yeah. So once they took out the water, mm -hmm. which was really a lot, it was like 60 ml. So you can imagine when you go for swimming and you have water yeah. in your ears. So whatever they hear, mm -hmm. whatever they hear is what they talk back. Okay. So she, we struggled with that. After that, now we did the speech we started doing the speech therapy and she got better. Mm. And thanks to teacher Nancy here, mm. uh, at the end of the day now our daughter is better. Mm. But that sickness, I assume that yeah, yeah. the sickness she had when she was born after the sickness, is what really brought this dyslexic thing. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. And then for you, Dolly Quintus. So of course, struggled, um, you know, a bit in school um, for for a while, right? Before before you were you were diagnosed with with dyslexia. So then in high school of course that continued because again in primary school like again <laughs> studying is, is a little bit quote unquote easier right and then when in high school because it's a lot of subjects a lot of reading it's a lot of cramming you know um for all those things so how was high school for you um like i said things mm. for me were a lot different mm. uh completely different i can only comprehend mm. uh, with this gentleman mm. uh, the fact that he was beaten yeah. like my heart completely and utterly goes out to him because that affects you for your whole life mm. my mum is the most supportive parent mm. ever mm -hmm. so if i did go to school and i struggled she always used to come in mm. and try and tell the teachers your teaching method 
is not working for Dolly. Okay. You know, there's something that you're, this is not Dolly's fault. Mm -hmm. There's something that you're doing mm -hmm. that's not right. Because this is what parents do. Mm -hmm. They always assume mm -hmm. that there's something wrong with the child. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Instead of like being empathetic or understand understanding. Why. I mm -hmm. think I've been completely and utterly privileged because I've grown, I've grown up in a society mm -hmm. where being... Mm -hmm as you say, not normal, mm -hmm. is okay. Yeah. Do you know? It's okay. You're not labelled as stupid. You know, mm -hmm. if a teacher or anybody, could, mm -hmm. I beg your pardon, called mm -hmm. me stupid, mm -hmm. they would get sued. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kind of setting. setting yeah. You know? So you my confidence yeah. as a child was mm -hmm. never compromised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was never felt yeah. belittled. I was never, I was never bullied at school mm -hmm. because children are taught mm. that we are all different mm -hmm. and kids understand yeah. and these things kind of have to start at home mm. where parents have to allow their kids to know that all people are not the same do you know what i mean because mm. bullying and uh putting people in boxes mm. could affect someone's whole Esteem, life yeah. you know mm -hmm. and that's where drug abuse comes in mm. alcoholism comes in mm. so we have to be very very sensitive mm -hmm. and parents as well have to be very sensitive mm -hmm. with how they speak to their children how they address their children mm -hmm. because calling your kid stupid and undermining mm -hmm. the way they think mm -hmm. is is in my opinion almost sickening i mean it's sad but i <laughs> can you entirely blame the parents? Because you see, at this point, the parent does not know, the teacher does not know, um, you know, what is what is going on with the child. But I think an aspect of awareness then is, is pretty much important. And that is why we're here today, to just pass as much awareness as we can really as far as dyslexia is concerned. So we're taking a break, but of course, when we come back, we'd want to hear more, and especially in terms of what exactly you struggle with. So I don't know, do you mind if I put you so to a test? I would give you something to read and see. Is, is, is that okay? That's, that's a little bit putting us on the spot because we told you we struggled. No, no, no. We it's just like want... me telling you to skip. No, really, do, listen. We just want to. No, we just want to to, uh, to no. make it easier for people to understand because no, it's, it's I think a little. I, personally, I think that's a little tiny bit undermining because. Okay, no. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, no. you know what I mean? It's like me okay, telling no, you to okay. speak Chinese or, or do something that you're not <laughs> capable of doing. Okay, it's fine. If you're not okay, it's okay. That's why I asked if you, if you mind. But but, but really, our uh, point is to sort of make people understand when you say you, this is what I struggle with, to make people understand. Because so many people would assume, eh, I mean, what is what is the big deal, right? But again, of course, when we come back, we'd want to understand more on the same. But if you have any more questions on the same, feel free to pass them on our way at NTV Kenya at Lubembe underscore. We need the hashtag to use is your world. You want to call it live as well? Feel free to do so. And of course, we'll be taking your feedback after this break. Stay with us. This is your world. Children. They are cute no matter what they do, but there is nothing cute about fever. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in just 15 minutes. Trust Panadol Baby and Infant to work on fever fast to bring back their cute smiles. <laughs> Dogspot Corrector, the power of vitamin C. Bye bye, dog spots. On this episode of The Money, we meet the founder of Pine House Schools in Dika. Pine House has had a great impact on me as an individual. 
have grown to be more accommodating. Dorcas Njoki, who branched out from her 8 to 5 job to pursue her dream in establishing a school that would provide a friendly environment for pupils to learn. Having testimonies of people that I was part of their growth and their life's journey really made me reconsider my calling in life. All these and more on The Money. The Money, showcasing resilience, exploring scalability. Aisha na kuroga. Unajua sahi ye ni fiance wangu? Kama uniamini, basi usikule chakule yake for two weeks. Alafu, kwa ni sera likufanya nini? Mpaka uka mfuta kazi? Mbona uli? Wewe, mburu ufanyi kazi? Eti ya rusti yetu tatugani munu su milioni. Ati, ungependa kuwa na ototo wangapi? Watoto? Sidhani nataka watoto wana kazi nyingi. Hapana. Alright, welcome back. Glad to see well that's the show is your world. But just in case you're tuning in right now today, our focus is on dyslexia. And of course, like I said, it's very important for us to understand what dyslexia is all about. And of course, debunk some of the myths that are there, really, as far as dyslexia is concerned. And of course, before we went on a break, first just we're trying to understand uh, you know the different areas that people um, you know with dyslexia struggle with, and of course that impact that it has on their lives. So very quickly, um, as far as dyslexia is concerned, and Nancy, I'm just going to throw this to you. Is it different for different people in terms of how it presents? Is it different? Or do we have like different types of dyslexia? Yeah, we have different types. And uh, mm -hmm. we have, uh, when we are doing an ass assessment, mm -hmm. there are those students who have dyslexia yeah. on mild cases. Mm -hmm. There are those who are moderate, mm -hmm. and there are those who are severe and profound. Yeah. So there are those classic continuum of dyslexia. Mm -hmm. A person with the mild dyslexia would fit in a, in a class tuition because okay. it's just reading mm -hmm. and uh, other things are fine, very fine. And I want to classify these guys here, mm -hmm. like people who are moderate mm -hmm. and mild, okay. not on the severe cases. All right. Yeah. Okay. So then what does it look like on the, on the moderate um, you know, side, on the severe side again? What, what does it look like? A person with uh, with moderate and uh, above uh, moderate and severe is mm -hmm. that person who is like uh, by 12 years by f uh, 15 years is not able to read at all okay yeah all right that is on and i want side, to yeah. also clarify that um, mm -hmm. with dyslexia mm -hmm. with different uh, strategies of support mm -hmm. there is so much improvement so but then you can't teach the same use the same method as she says mm. to teach uh, in a class mm -hmm. and then you say uh, you are helping a, a student with dyslexia mm -hmm. they require different strategies mm -hmm. they require different approach mm -hmm. to be able to fit in mm -hmm. and so that they can be understood and they can be uh, they can be given support uh, so that they can read mm -hmm. uh, or fit in a class situation mm -hmm. so uh, bringing a ch up a child with dyslexia and expecting them to to learn to read mm -hmm. just like any other student mm -hmm. uh, not having giving them different approach or mm -hmm. support mm -hmm. then they are going to live without reading forever and continue blaming them yeah so they require different approach yeah. in reading yeah. yeah and of course we want to, un to understand them the different approaches just to make sure that they also get the same quality education just like any other child um, is concerned um, so Philip you have bullied so much in in high school um, you know a lot really happens um, 
in high school, but, um, and like you said, you did not do well, and yet you're a really, really smart, um, you know, student. So then, how did that impact you as, as a person? Um, and that is in high school and even high school. How were you able to then maneuver? Because again, like any other parent, the expectation is you go to school, you finish high school, and then you know you go to probably university, get a job, story continues. Um, I think first, first of all, I think I don't blame my parents. Mm -hmm. um, my mom is a village girl and my dad was a government officer. Mm -hmm. um, and both of them had high school special. My mom was like, I wanted to be a nurse, I wanted to be a doctor. My dad yeah. was like, I wanted to be, you know, study hard. Mm. And they, they, they kept telling me, we've paid school fees, study. Why mm. can't you just pass? Mm -hmm. why, why can't you like do your homework? Why are you always in trouble? Because mm -hmm. in school, I had a history of being suspended. Because um, one thing with being dyslexia, we, we, we really suffer from um, low self-esteem. Okay. And we, uh, from a family setup, we, we, we just want rewards. And, our, and the rewards can be hugging, mm -hmm. you know, acknowledgement, you know, just a simple good job. Those are the things which we really thrive on. Yeah. And I, I, I never used to get it. So the only attention I got was now being being uh, naughty in school, mm. being in trouble. That's the only time my parents actually would, would come to school, right. and that's the time people would notice me, because mm. people never never used to notice me. Mm. So in school I was very artistic, I was, um, and uh, I, I find our schools are also don't have uh, uh, mechanisms to actually uh, uh, um, ensure people like us actually uh, thrive better. Mm. Like for me, class totally, mm. but I can study on my own. And okay. I'm, I'm lucky nowadays I use audiobooks. I just plug okay. in and listen in and, mm -hmm. and I can quickly uh, uh, understand. And we're also very good listeners. Mm -hmm. As when you talk, I can listen and, and just comprehend. Okay. I don't need to take notes. Right. So in, in, in school, I purposely flunked because I hated school. I hated mm -hmm. school completely because of the bullying. The bullying was so intense. Mm -hmm. I went to a school in Western Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we find that coming from Nairobi, going to a, to, to, to a school in the village, you tend to be on the spotlight. Oh, yes. This guy is from Nairobi, and he cannot Nairobi read. Nairobi, This guy, and mm -hmm. So I was always in trouble mm -hmm. because I, um, and it, it, you see, um, our mind uh, works differently. Like, mm -hmm. I can be in class, mm -hmm. but I, I can drift away. I can actually, uh, like, I can think uh, at three things at the same time right. in my brain. Mm -hmm. As you're talking, mm -hmm. so as you're talking, I can be busy thinking about something else or doing something else. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 not that we don't lack attention. It's just like our brains can pr we, we process so many things at the same time. At the same time, yeah. As it's like having thirty TVs in your brain mm. with no remote. Okay. That's that's what I struggled with. So my in my school, I struggled with with a lot of alcohol abuse because mm. that was the only time I could feel normal. Because everybody around me was calling me stupid. Mm. Everybody around me was labeling me. Uh, that guy is the one who cannot read. Mm. I used to be a laughing stock in school. Mm. In fact, I used to be the, the teachers used to, used to come to class and point me, "Hey, Ogola, Because I used to ask questions. Because okay. uh, um, what I used to do, I used to get the syllabus and study ahead of the teacher. Mm. So the teacher comes, ask questions differently, and it took me, it put me in trouble. Mm. I remember there's a day I wrote an, um, um, a composition, and I was very futuristic, where I was the bride were having a, I mean, their, their wedding undersea, deep sea. Mm. I was told that is stupid. Well, that what is really think? cool, though. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is how I see it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, I, I, I really just, um, in fact, from, from school, I really sunk into alcoholism. Mm -hmm. I, used to, I used to just drink because no one used to, used to understand me. I used to see things differently. Mm -hmm. I used to come up with ideas and people used to shut me down. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at my career progression, mm -hmm. Uh, people with dyslexia are, are risk takers, as okay. in we are bold, we, are, we see something, we'll go for it. When people run away, mm. we'll actually go for it. So mm. uh, I'm someone who has no formal education, okay. but I've achieved uh, so much like people who have PhDs. Okay. I have taught in universities, I've mm. spoken, I've managed big brands. Mm. So for me, what I'll say is, um, first of all, as a country, we need to have mechanisms where parents get to understand the signs and symptoms, where yeah. schools get to understand kids like us. Mm. And, and when I look at my son, my son has similar characteristics. In fact, I laugh. Mm. The, okay. the teacher called me the, the other day and told me, um, I suspect your son has dyslexia. I just laughed. I'm like, I have yeah. dyslexia. Because yeah. he can't do homework, mm. but he's good in everything else. He's a photographer, he's a videographer, he can shoot and edit. Mm. He, he wants to become a journalist. Okay. And, and, and he's only 10 years old. Yeah. But when it comes to homework, we mm -hmm. struggle. Yeah. So uh, I agree with Nancy. It, um, mm. I think it's it's actual uh, it's, it's ge genetic of some sort. Mm. Yep. Mm. Okay. All right. And of course, it's it's interesting now that you say you the teacher actually just called you and said I think your son is dyslexic, meaning like there's a bit of awareness, um, yep. you know, yep. um, out here as far as dyslexia is concerned. But still, in the same magnitude, there's people a lot of people actually struggling with um, you know understanding dyslexia and especially picking up you know the symptoms as early as early as possible. So Dolly Quinter, for you. 
you said, of course, um, your mom understood what, what you had. And even in school, um, you know, she would tell the teachers, listen, this is not working because this is what is happening. So then how um, were you able then to maneuver? Like, did you find, um, you know, was there a solution in terms of, you know, um, treating you differently so that you, again, at the end of the day, just attain the highest quality uh, of education? I had um, a, a teaching assistant that would sit with me through all my classes mm -hmm. and help me. Um, and obviously, when you when you are dyslexic, mm -hmm. your concentration, if something is boring and mm -hmm. you're not interested, you just, you just shut off. Yeah. So she was there to kind of like bring, bring me back. back. Yeah. But I knew mm -hmm. as soon as I finish uh, school that like mm -hmm. I wasn't going to further go to university. I just, for me, I just knew it was just a waste of time for me. So mm -hmm. I just got in and just like dug in and started uh, I got into work, worked for two years, and then started a business. Mm. So I just knew you, like like Philip was saying, mm. you know exactly what you can do. Mm. People who are dyslexic are so self-aware, mm -hmm. so self-aware. And it's so ir ironic mm. that um, we read more than the average person that can read. Like, I listen to three audio books a week. Okay. So it's re it's the way we think, it's just so, it's completely and utterly different mm -hmm. from everybody else. But it's good for um, people at home and people mm -hmm. watching this to just understand that we should just accept people just yeah. how they are yeah. and know that not everything is going to be like you know, conventional. There's no structured yeah. con conventional, you know, as, as, as what, we, what we expect. But I'm sure there are instances where you found yourself in a place where you had to read or you had to do yeah, the of things. Course, and, yeah, of course, so of course, of course, of course, of course. Even now, you know, mm -hmm. I find myself, I, I have to read an email mm -hmm. or I have to read a text message. Mm -hmm. um, you find yourself that you have to read. It's not that... I, my dyslexia is not severe where I can't read, I can't mm. write, I can fill out a form. You know, like now, you cannot travel if you can't fill out an application form. Because mm -hmm. prior, when you get to somewhere, they might say, you need to do this. So I'm mm. I'm on the end where I can manoeuvre about. Mm. Um, so, um, But in school, I just knew... I just didn't... No. I, just, I, just, I just felt, for me, it mm. was just... I just could not wait to just leave. I just, I, just, I just couldn't wait to leave. I just used to think, like, this is... I, I'm not saying school's bad, but yeah. I just used to think this is such a waste of time. Yeah. And I used to go home and I used to say, Mum, going to school is such a waste of time. And she used yeah. to be like, no, but you have to go. But I used to be like, it's just a waste of time. Okay, all right. <laughs> but but it's good that, that you had um, that kind of support where yeah, you would I'm sit very, and tell your parents, very, listen, uh, I know this is not working for me. And they would accept that. But for so many people out here, and especially, um, you know, those ones who... Um, um, you know, are dyslexic. Of course, they don't get that, you know, you can't just sit with your parent and tell them, listen, uh -uh, this, this is not working for me. I am out, okay? So I think, um, you know, a level of awareness and, and just understanding that some of the signs, I think it's, it's pretty much um, important. And for you, Thomas, then understanding what your child um, is struggling with, and that is don't want to do homework, don't want to read, I'd, I'd rather do all the things. So in terms of then support, what kind of support do you do you offer her now that you're aware that this is what is going on with my child? Oh well, it's like I said, it's been a journey. Yeah. It's it's quite expensive actually. Mm. Let me just put it like that. Mm. For you to come to understand, mm. I'm sorry for these guys that mm. it took, especially for you boss. Yeah. Yeah. A I mean, uh, with my child, me, I'm kind of a parent. Yeah. My child says, Dad, today I don't feel like I want to go to school. Mm. Teacher Nancy will tell you. Mm. I say it's fine. Sleep. Okay. I don't force my kids to... To me, I said, I told teacher Nancy, as long as they're able to count money, me, I'm good with it. Okay. <laughs> I told teacher Nancy that there's no pressure. True. There's no pressure. So we went to different schools mm -hmm. trying to look for help. Mm -hmm. And every time it didn't work, mm -hmm. like we had a teacher assistant, I think I've told you that, yeah. that we, we could pay extra money, like between twelve and 16000 okay. every month. That is plus the school fees. Yeah. And the teacher would, I'm sorry, the teacher wouldn't do much. Okay. Yeah, we were still at the same place. Mm. Okay, I want some results. Every, every parent wants some results. Yeah. Like, I put in some money, mm. I want some results. Mm. So you would go to, we went to another school where there was no transport. You pay 120000 a term. And you have to take your child to Kikuyu every day. And we stay in Embakasi. 
So it became yeah. so costly. So we'd go twice in a week. And my baby would wake up in the morning excited and say, hey, dad, we're going to school today. I'm like, hey, you know I have work. Because yeah. you're trying to imagine your day revolves around taking your child to school. To school yeah. Because you wake up at 6 in was the morning. Was this a specialized school or just? Yeah, it was. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I also realized, sorry to say, most people have really capitalized on this, I would call it a handicap. Let me call it that. Most people have really capitalized on it. Mm -hmm. They'll be told you need to do this, you need to buy this book, mm -hmm. you need to meet this expert, yeah. you need, and all this time. Yeah. So when we realized she was dyslexic mm -hmm. and we found a nice school, it was a huge sacrifice to say now she can go and do boarding because we are yeah. one small family. Mm -hmm. So she's in boarding now mm -hmm. and we do everything in our power. And now she's better her. to make sure yeah. she stays there. And now she can, she can read. Mm -hmm. It's not that important as long as she can count money. She can now <laughs> read. Really emphasizing yeah. That. As long as she counts money, that's all that's Yeah, she can read. Okay. She can do the things that we really were looking forward to her doing. But socially, she's 100%. Okay. And there's no pressure. Yeah. No pressure at all. And I really, really like that. Um, yeah. You know, and especially for parents who are watching us and thinking, you know, like this structure, conventional structure that, yes. um, you know, ends up, again, like Dolly and, and, and um, you know, um, and, and Philip say, that all this pressure, of course, would push you into doing things sort of to try and help you cope. But yes. most of the time, it's not it's not a good or a healthy uh, coping mechanism. So I hope all the parents watching us today... Can um, I just add know, one sort thing? Of, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. I think uh, even parents, mm -hmm. uh, this one I'm throwing to teacher Nancy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even parents... You know, sometimes it's, it's very easy to play the parent. Yeah. Hey, uh, you're beating the child. You know, most parents don't know. Mm. Yes. Um, we have had parents, like uh, when I was teaching in a main uh, in a regular school, mm. I have seen this child, I have done everything that I can for this child to yeah. read, including beating because, you see, it was around. But the child is still not reading. But then we would have parents who come and say, huyu anahitaji kuchapwa. Mm. Then when I realized that this is not working for me, I put my cane out because even had my son, mm. I bet, mm. because of the same, but he couldn't read because of beating. Mm. So I know beating does not help mm. at all. Mm. Not even that. Calling names does not help. Really Giving yeah. them Makes pressure in uh, performance, it doesn't help. Actually, as uh, Doris said, it's mm. like telling somebody to speak French mm. and you have not taught that person French. Mm. And I've also said before that there is this huge conflict between the parents and the teacher mm. because the teacher, when the parent, like you also, when you take your child to school, what do you expect? Mm. You expect the mm. son or your child, daughter to read mm. in the same level like the others. The others and yeah. you can even compare and say, I read at this level, so mm. I'm also expecting my son to read. Mm. And also, there are those achievements that you as a parent you wanted to have. Mm. And uh, you, are, you want your son or mm. your daughter to achieve because you failed. Yeah. So those are the kind of the pressure that we have with the children. Mm -hmm. We have even the teachers after advising them that this person has dyslexia mm -hmm. and they require different approach. They say, um, uh, he is not interested, he's just, he's prayerful. Mm -hmm. And you can even see most of the report forms, they come as saying he could do better. It's only that he's prayerful. Yeah. This is so common, yeah. like he could do better. Mm -hmm. But then the person who's saying he could do better, he's not doing anything different from what others I are doing or what, yeah. he, what he's doing for the other children. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. pressure and uh, conflict between the teacher and the parent. Yes. But I also don't blame the parent, mm -hmm. as I said before, because uh, this is something, it's, uh, I would say it's a something new that is going around. Somebody is being, uh, we are learning now that, not always that you take a child to school yeah. and he'll give you performance like, yeah, and always say, there is no one who has chosen to be the bottom of the class Absolutely. ever. Nobody so if you that. find somebody yeah. who is being at the bottom, like first term, second term, third term, mm -hmm. and at the second year you are still expecting this person to do different, mm -hmm. then I always say the person who has problem is the person who is expecting, mm -hmm. not the child, mm -hmm. because no one wants to be last, mm -hmm. No one would want to always have read for me, read for me here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you look beyond yeah. that this person is trying, 
but there is some there there are some impediments that he's not able to read like mm -hmm. any other child. Yeah. yeah. So and 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 now uh -huh. where we see a lot of the children who again the parents are busy. You know, they'll tell you, me, me, I, I just want the best for my child. So you take them to the best schools, just work extra hard just to make sure that your child has the best life, not everything that they want, but they're comfortable in terms of, you know, go to a really good school, um, have a nice meal, live in a good house. You know, all the parents would say, I'm really trying my best to make sure that my child has all that they need. But at the same time, don't spend enough time with the child to pick some of this, some of these things, uh, which I think is very, very essential for, you know, both the parents and the teachers, again, to be a little bit observant and a bit empathetic, um, you know, like, like Dolly was, was saying. So Dolly, again, for you, like you said, you you found different ways of just doing things just to make sure that at the end of the day you get as much done as possible. But one thing was was certain that you decided me, I'm not going to go to yeah, university I just, I, because it was a waste of time. Yeah, so in, in terms of then setting up your business and, and making sure that it, it thrives, what are some of the things that you had to sort of employ to help you even manage these people um, and just make sure that your business thrives? Um, the things that I can't do, mm -hmm. I accept I can't do, and I'll just get someone that can do it. Right. And I'm very okay with understanding mm -hmm. that um, I can't write a contract, mm -hmm. you know, I can't um, maybe negotiate some certain things, mm -hmm. and I just get somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. And I and another thing is, I think maybe it's different because of where I live. Mm -hmm. You're not ashamed of being dyslexic. Yeah. So if you, I'm on the be no yeah, all, if I'm yeah. on the phone to somebody and someone's saying something too fast, I say, can you slow down? I'm dyslexic. Or can you take your time? I'm dyslexic. Mm -hmm. So um, I just think I I just think it's just. Uh, I just feel that's why I started my organization because I feel mm -hmm. like I have been the lucky grape. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, it, for me, it's not. I can only I can only comprehend what Philip has gone through. Like I can only like mm -hmm. imagine mm -hmm. what he's like, how life has been for him. Yeah, yeah. And and for you, you also said at some point you just had to accept. And, yeah, and yeah, acceptance of course. Is, is 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 the first step towards um, you know being okay. Um, with the same, um, but for you, Philip, again, was was it easy for you to accept that this is who I am? Um, because, like you said, you resolved into, you know, sort of like a healthy coping mechanism. Um, acceptance was uh, was really hard for me uh, after being diagnosed. Um, it was during the, the, the COVID pandemic. Oh, I was wow. actually uh, I was the head of digital for the COVID mm -hmm. National Task Force. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine a dyslexic person who has no formal education managing the country's mm -hmm. digital communication. Mm -hmm. That is something. Yeah. And uh, after that, I actually got s severe trauma attacks. That's why I was actually went for therapy. And after a series of therapies, they were like, mm -hmm. dude, let's go back in time, your childhood. How are yeah, you? And stuff. And that's now where they're like, yeah. they actually not think you're dyslexic. Oh, wow. And okay. um, that's now when now it made sense. For the first time, you can imagine, I'm in my 40s. Mm. Then someone for the first time speaks my Tells language. Tells you this is, you know. this is and, it. And um, it, it shows how I've been struggling. I've struggled a lot with, with low self-esteem. I've struggled a lot with self-doubt. Because mm. you come up with a solution, people don't see it. And, 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 and mm. after being diagnosed, I had to drop everything. I even left the country for, two, uh, for almost a whole year. Mm. I've taken a break from everything for two years. Mm. In fact, I started work like, like, uh, like, like one month ago. Oh, I wow. dropped everything completely. I just wanted to understand myself. Mm. wanted, first of all, to process what this condition what means for this, me. Yes. And um, it took time to accept. And mm -hmm. I, I had to sit down with my family, mm -hmm. uh, where I told them, guys, this is me. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys have to accept. Because family is the biggest trigger to people who are dyslexic. Mm -hmm. If they don't, I, I, um, she's lucky. Yeah. And I, you, you can imagine, can I grew up with parents who have no idea of what this condition is. Mm -hmm. I grew up with labeling. I grew up with, you know, being, lab being pointed fingers at people laughing at you, mm -hmm. being taken advantage of. Because yeah. We're actually very high, highly empathetic, mm. highly compassionate. Mm. So, so after processing, after acceptance, now I, I'm actually speaking about it. And mm. I've actually been, been bestowed as the Goodwill Ambassador of the Dyslexia Association of Kenya. Mm. And I want to talk about this condition. I want to raise awareness about it. Mm. When you look at, um, at least for her, she had parents who actually understood from the word go. Yeah. If someone like me, people noticed my talent as a kid, mm. we will be so far right now. Oh, yes. And there are so Absolutely. many kids like me out there. There are so many. So you, you can imagine, I have built myself from scratch. Mm. I have, I, I used to have a magazine. I have no m training in media. Mm -hmm. uh, people who are dyslexic, we actually learn on the go. You give me an assignment, we, we, we process it, mm. 
And uh, there's, there's, there's something which we have, it's, it's, I don't know if you, you, you process this too, mm -hmm. it's called hyperfocus. Mm -hmm. I can actually shut down noise around me and focus on something. All right. Totally. Mm -hmm. And focus it with, with lesser precision mm -hmm. and come up with solution. Mm -hmm. I, I, I joined Red Cross uh, as an intern. Mm -hmm. I grew up the ranks to, to become the head of digital, yeah. managing the country's in the disaster response. With when I look at the country's things. disaster response, mm -hmm. I look at it from a dyslexic perspective. Mm -hmm. As in, I have consulted for nearly all government agencies. Mm -hmm. the, all, all the UN agencies mm -hmm. have, have advised, as in, uh, I, I even won a global award to, to become yeah, the UN indeed. Foundation a Global Social Good Ambassador. Yeah. So it shows that people with dyslexia, if they're given opportunities, they can actually become who they are. So for me, um, I knew and accepted that um, I couldn't fit in a, in, in a normal setup. That's mm -hmm. why I, I started Digital Humanitarian. So Digital mm -hmm. Humanitarian is a social good movement which just champions the use of social media for good. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I really want to thank people who have given me opportunities. Um, yeah. Like, they didn't know that I had the condition. But okay. they're like, Philip, you're talented, you're smart. Come and sit here. Come work. and do. Okay. So I think as a society, we, we, we need to understand that at times it's not the academic progression. At times it's just skill, mm -hmm. it's wit. Mm -hmm. uh, and... and, and um, I just want to say one thing. It also comes with the, with the downside. Okay. Can we discuss the downside after the break? Yes. Because we, go, we need to go on a break right now. And of course, also that aspect of understanding it. Much awareness out there and just giving as much support as we can to everybody. You know, be empathetic to everybody. But of course, um, especially persons who are dyslexic. How do we get there? Well, we discuss all that after the short break. Stay with us. This is your world. starts to work on fever in just 15 minutes. Trust Panadol Baby and Infant to work on fever fast to bring back their cute smiles. They recognize that there is no wall that you can build that can keep the enemy away from you if God doesn't keep you safe. And that's a big lesson for us. all my money and killed my girlfriend too I want to take revenge Lord thank you very much for saving me I'm grateful for this second chance at life so I can be with my family for much longer by the way Miran before I forget um, Dudai has been waiting for you because she uh, has a surprise for you borrowed embrace Borrowed Embrace in association with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. Choose boldness. Celebrate the skin you're in and dress with confidence with Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Body Lotion. The triple layered care of deep moisture serum, precious cocoa butter and vitamin E enriches your skin for 48 hours. Choose to wear your skin with pride with Nivea. Kwanini kuni chenga 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 Yaka mitatu kule Japan Kidogo tu Usomia kudunga watu Utamu tu 
Sindani. Jamani tunachenga mpira ndani ya gumzo la Sato. Sitaki mze aliyezeka. Nataka kijana. Sasa ni kazo wewe una vita na sio kuteleza. Bila ndio utakuota kidogo. Ngoja. Hata mimi. Mtu kijadili maswala yanayokuwa thiri wewe katika jamii. Hii ni sura yangu. Na hii sura imeolewa. Na mambo mingi kwa ndoa ambayo hayahusiani na mapenzi peke yake. Penda kweli lakini pia tumia bongo. <laughs> Naloogopa kusema na wengine Friday tuliweka wazi. Huyo <laughs> mwanamume akizungu akaja na puka mwisho akaba kishwa na kachumbari na maavocado. I'm not getting burdened to her. Mm. Like she'll be feeding me like that. Huyo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> babu mimi namuelewa. Yeah. Anajua anakoenda. Yeah. Chiro hata afadhali ungeniuliza ngapi pale ndugu yangu mdogo. Mwambie <laughs> ombea. <laughs> Come August this year, Kenyans will head to the ballot to select their leaders for the next five years. Time has come for the electorate you're targeting to know you better. Articulate your thoughts, plans, and vision to the relevant audiences. Reach out to us through the contacts on your screen. Right. So we literally have less than 30 more minutes to go and uh, you know we're just having such an insightful, insightful conversation this morning about dyslexia and understanding what dyslexia is all about and what kind of support that you can offer uh, to someone who is dyslexic and especially for the parents. I think this is such an eye-opening um, you know, conversation for all the parents out there. But we have a caller on the line, Awari from Busia. Good morning. Good morning, madam. Thank you very much for calling us this morning. Kindly speak up. Do you have a question or do you want to chime into the conversation? Yes, I have. I've got a question. Eh? Go ahead. I have a child who almost thought that she's going to be living there. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. I have a child who almost thought that she's going to be there. Uh -huh. And this child has uh, gone up to form two. I think he must be form two. Mm hmm he passed uh, HD very well, mm. but when he reached form two, he was scoring like 10%, mm. 12% in most of the subjects. Mm -hmm. And then the teachers just told the child mm. to look for another school. So they were tired, tired of people. They were just tired, getting tired of him. Eh? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I removed the child from the school after I realized that the child was getting into a lot of trouble in the school. Mm -hmm. With uh, even uh, with the fellow students, and uh, the teacher stepped on someone in me. Mm -hmm. So I removed, after removing the child from the school, I took the child to uh, to court. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I tried to find another school there, mm -hmm. and the, the school rejected me, okay. looking at the report card. Mm -hmm. So up to now, I just don't know what to do with this child, mm -hmm. how, how he can, he can earn a living help mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. What assistance can I get from the yeah. expert then? Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, I worry for that Nancy or Philip, do you wanna any of you do you want to take do you wanna start? Yeah, about the he mm -hmm. says that his son is informed too. Um yes, and, and he has been rejected all along because um, you know, of school. Yeah, um I feel for him and I understand how what he's going through because at uh, most of the cases we have high school teachers not and really understanding mm -hmm. and do not have time mm -hmm. and those children who have uh, difficulty in performance they are the most bullied mm -hmm. by they are bullied by the schools yeah. the head the teachers mm -hmm. the students and uh, their self esteem goes very low Absolutely. yeah so getting him a school for where he can be understood because uh, apparently there is nowhere else you can bring up a child mm -hmm. He has to be in school, mm -hmm. so looking for a school that uh, would understand him would be very well. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I always ask, advise the parents when you are looking for a school, go ahead and tell the the school this uh, is what this my is son what has, yes. so that they are dealing with something that they already understand. Mm -hmm. And if they want to push him out, mm -hmm. it's with out of knowledge that they are doing it 
uh, they, if they want to take yeah. him, they will take him with knowledge that he has difficulty in performance. Yeah. But when you don't tell them, then he's going to be treated like any other, and then the the bullying will still persist. Absolutely. It's better they yeah. say we don't take this kid because uh, we, we don't, don't have the resources. Yeah, instead to help. of taking the child and then having him bullied. Uh, yeah. yeah, getting a school, getting a school for him is really, really fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. and there are schools there. Uh, there are schools out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We All have right. Rare Gem Trading School that yes. is high school. Yeah. We have a high school for uh, children with dyslexia, mm -hmm. and uh, they are doing very well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it is a boarding school. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. And, and, and Philip, because the dad is concerned, he's like, so then how will yeah. he, you know, earn a living, just leave, um, you know, his life fulfilled if he doesn't go to school? What would you tell them? Uh, when, I, when I listen to the caller, um, the, the, call, the, the, the story mirrors, me, mirrors my, mm. my story. Yeah. Like, um, I, was, I was one of the top students in primary school, but mm. secondary school, the, due to the bullying from teachers, from the school students, mm. I hated school. Yeah. And... Uh, as, as the parent, he, he must now play a role because my parents were not present. I, and I really like that he's a parent, he's, he's concerned. I, I can't yes. blame my parents because they didn't know about They didn't it. know, true. So at least for him now, what he needs to know first of all is to make sure the, the, his son's esteem is actually up. Mm -hmm. He needs to boost his esteem. Mm -hmm. He needs to understand his skills. Mm -hmm. if he, is he artistic? Is he in music? Is he, is he in art? Nurture that talent. Because okay. at times as parents, we dampen down our, our children because they're artistic. That's so true. And we're telling them, like, I used to, I used to draw. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the cartoonist here at, at, at Nation, mm -hmm. uh, Victor Ndula. Mm -hmm. I was with him in, in, in primary school. Yeah. And we used to compete in class. Nice. I was beaten. I was told, art does not pay. So as the parent, he, he first needs to understand his child. Mm -hmm. What are his skills? What are his strengths? Mm -hmm. Nurture those strengths. Because okay. once that child understands that, people, people understand who he is. Because at times, like, I struggled with uh, alcoholism because no one, no, no, no one under, uh, understood me. That's true. So f for me, I'll say the, the first step is to sit down with, the, with, the, with his son, get mm -hmm. to know his skills, mm -hmm. get a good school where they, 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 they can actually accommodate him. Just, and, yes, and focus and on the skill. Focus on the skills and focus on, 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 on building his, 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 yeah. his self-esteem. Okay, because then taking him to like a conventional school might stress the son yeah. even yeah. even more. Okay, and then of course, um, Thomas, you are a parent as well and, and listening to, to his frustration as a parent um, you know it's amazing that he's he's really really um, you know eager to get help for the for the for the son so what would you tell him and then you also have a book for us um, you know to show us what's what's in the book but before that just speak to to a worry oh mr. worry man you're lucky to have a child like that yeah I can tell you for free because yeah. what I noticed my daughter is so loving mm -hmm. she's uh, this these guys are so loving and uh, mm -hmm. Well, they are manipulative, but they are really, really <laughs> loving. They are really, really loving. What you need to do, like me, I know for sure, I know that uh, my child one day will have a restaurant. Absolutely. She loves cooking. Yeah, Absolutely. she loves cooking. Yeah. That one I know. She's we just, uh, Miss Nancy is helping me to bring Kumlea to, yes. but I know where she's headed. Yeah. Please get to know where your child is headed. Mm -hmm. Don't judge them. Don't push them. You know, as Africans, we always say, hey, my child counts. Yes. Then when you're alone, they count one to ten very well. Yeah. But when I guess show up, <laughs> at one, nine, cut, <laughs> you know. No, so <laughs> and then you make fun of them in front of the, yeah. Yeah, is, so please get to know yeah. what you, which, where your child is at. Yeah. Get to know. Now, I think he said now the boy is in form two. Yes. So that, that's really someone who can articulate their points. Mm -hmm. Please get to know where the, your child is at and don't push them. Mm -hmm. Don't push them. Sit down with them. Get to understand them. Mm -hmm. Get to understand them and then nurture, like he has mm -hmm. said, nurture where they are at and show them love. Otherwise, they are going to lock you out. Oh, yeah. that, yes. That's true. You'll be locked yeah. out. You'll be locked out and you will lose as a mm. parent. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. allow yourself to yeah. be locked out by And plus, they're, they're really talented and, and, and they're creatives. And even the example that, that we gave, um, you know, earlier on, the likes of Albert Einstein. I yes. mean, all these amazing people, yes. uh, Richard Branson, Tom Cruise, they're very... Create the, their intellect is just on another level. So again, I mean, they might not do very well in school, but they're ta insanely talented in other in other areas. So nurture that, all right? Yes. You have a book for us. What's what's what exactly oh, is yeah. in the book? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I yes. have a book here. This is Nadia's book, right? This is yeah, I can see book. Nadia's the name. Yeah. yeah. And as you can see here, mm -hmm. don't know whether you can zoom in. Okay, maybe hold it up for us so that we can. Yeah, like this. We can see. Okay. See. All right. So what's now, happening? Uh, when your child writes like this. You, so can you see and it? This right? is grade, grade, uh, this is 2020. That must be grade four. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, you get frustrated, but you yeah. do not. But just, just, face, it, just face it front, yes, so that like our cameraman can, yes. can, can zoom into the, into the, into the book. Yeah, uh-huh. You can see this. Yeah. This is how my daughter was writing before when she was in grade four. She's way better now. I mean, I, I am an adult, but I can't write. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this, this yes. is, yeah, this is, when you look at. Yeah, just continue, just hold it so that we can, so we can, we can see. There. Yeah, okay. All right. You see, yeah, at grade four, and this time you're paying so much, and yeah, and you have a teacher who is really trying to help, yeah, and you don't understand what's going on with your child. Yeah, no, but why the is every is other good, child though. the handwriting yeah. is good? Okay, uh -huh. yeah, and especially when you have the younger one, yeah, the, let me see if I can see him. I'm not trying to compare or anything, yeah, yeah, but her young sister mm -hmm. can write like this, mm. okay. You see the difference? Okay. I'm not trying yeah. to compare or anything. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you that now you start understanding both of them and you it's don't. It's different the way... They're different the way they perceive the, things. Yes. The way they... This one writes like this. Yeah. The other one writes like this. And this one is so passionate. Yeah. She's so passionate. She comes from school. She sits down. You know there's that uh, sibling competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she wants to... She wants, and I tell her, hey, do you take your time? Yeah. But then we had teachers who really didn't, didn't judge. They don't judge like, hey, you came and they just write their scene. You mm. see, the kind of teachers ah, we used to have, they don't. Yes. Yeah, yeah. the kind of teachers of girl and I would think we are close in age. Yeah. The kind of teachers we used to have, man, a handwriting was a big deal. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And you've written like this, like that, like this, like that. Yeah. You have to. But here the teacher writes scene. scene. They don't go judging scene. at poor. You know, as was was really spelled out. Yes. Very poor. See me in the <laughs> office. No, this one, this one is different. Yeah. Yeah, the teacher writes their scene and they, they sit down with you and they explain. You see now she what could do this. What do you mean this. by, yes. Yeah, and then slowly by slowly, you grow with your child. Yeah. You grow with your child. Now she writes way better. I wish Miss uh, Teacher Nancy would have brought. Now yeah. she does way better. <laughs> yeah, you grow, you grow. Like I'll tell uh, the parent who's just called. Yeah. You grow together with your child. Mm -hmm. Get to know, you don't start beating them up and say, hey, isn't yeah. nini unandika mother You yeah. don't do that. Yeah. You, you don't start comparing them with the other child because yeah. they are so good at other things. Yes. But honestly, reading and writing is not... It's at the end of the and, day, and it's not yes, the end of life. Yeah, it, it doesn't really life. define whether you yes. be successful or not. That yes. Don't do that. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest problem which I had was, uh, you, you know, when teachers just dismiss you and, and, and I'm constantly flagged for my handwriting. Mm -hmm. I, I have the worst handwriting. Even right now, I yeah. write like a chicken. I have the worst. I think I have the worst. But so yeah. I think for, uh, to, uh, to Mr. Awori who just called in, yeah. I think I'll give my experience. Mm -hmm. I'm that child who lacked parental presence. My father was present with presence, but I never, I never, mm -hmm. I never felt his presence. Mm. You know, as, pe as a person who, who, who is dyslexic, you go through so much bullying, mm -hmm. you go through so much ridicule, yeah. you suffer from low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. you, you tend to lock yourself in your own bubble. Yeah. And that's where you lose your child. Okay. So I locked my parents out, mm -hmm. as in we were never that close. Mm. I bonded with my dad in his deathbed. Oh, I'm sorry. bonding with my mom right now, where yeah. I'm like, mom, did you know I was sick? Yeah. She's like, I noticed there's something about you, but I couldn't but tell. But I didn't know, yeah. You know? Okay. So the, the caller who just called in right now, it's mm -hmm. very, very important to connect with the, with his the mm -hmm. son emotionally. Because yeah. if he doesn't do that, that son will lock him out. Okay. And he, you don't want that really as a parent. Yes. You, really, you really don't want that. Okay. Um, we have feedback. Okay. That's good to hear what someone had to say as far as, you know, our topic of conversation today. And it's all about dyslexia. So, Wandia um, Mukaburu says, why isn't the government of Kenya providing technology, for example, audiovisual curriculum uh, or exams to learners identified with learning disabilities? And yet, Ministry of ICT and Ministry of Education seem to be working very well. It is such a pain to see a brilliant child having their self-esteem crushed, okay? Thank you very much, um, you know, for that. And I think, Nancy, you might want to chime in as you also show us some of the materials that you have for us today. Yeah, before yeah. I show you this, mm -hmm. I want to think of a world where there is no people with dyslexia. How would mm -hmm. that be? Yeah. A very, very boring, boring world. world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have given us very, very big uh, mm -hmm. example of people who have changed Done the world. Amazing so I always think that if we didn't have people with dyslexia, then mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't even have bulbs. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't vaginarize, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, 
when I think of um, dyslexia, mm -hmm. I think uh, of it like world changer. Yes. Yeah, it's something that changes the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's sooner we start uh, embracing them. Mm -hmm. And in Kenya, we start um, accepting our people with dyslexia mm -hmm. and giving, giving them opportunity mm -hmm. to show us what they have, mm -hmm. rather than where in a job you place, when you yes. say you are struggling with reading, mm -hmm. they start looking oh, yeah. at you are, uh, that's why she doesn't have put comma, mm -hmm. she doesn't put commas in her statement, is it the reason why she doesn't do this and that, and the yeah. sooner mm -hmm. uh, it is realized, yeah. they start digging up yeah. your background, and, and then, then you are off, which yeah, is not right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the things that I have here, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's for specifically teaching now the mm -hmm. child who is struggling mm -hmm. by going to the basic and when we are going to the basic we don't just go to the basic by uh, to the child who is starting the school mm -hmm. it's as soon as we realize that we are struggling in reading okay. so if you are in standard seven mm -hmm. if you're in standard six we take you back to the basic because as uh, Dori said mm -hmm. reading is still important even if you're having problem with the, we know you're having yes. problem with reading mm -hmm. but then we want you to we want to train you mm -hmm. to read when you go to the airport, mm -hmm. you don't ask people to read for you. Yeah. You can look up and say, know your direction. Mm -hmm. So that's why we take the children to the basic and uh, we use the, um, these are flashcards. Okay. And uh, these flashcards take you back to, mm -hmm. I said uh, phoneme. Yes. It is what the people with dyslexia struggle with. Mm -hmm. So we'll, I'll show you, mm -hmm. like, this is my student, okay. say this. And this comes like every time we're having a lesson. Yeah. We start by showing okay. you what, are, what makes what? the reading. Because okay. reading is made by uh -huh. using the phonics. Okay. Do you want to hold it so that, yeah. yes, that would, yes. We can, so we can see that. for yes. the student, I'll show you this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll teach you a sound at a time. Okay. And then if I uh, teach a sound at a time, mm -hmm. consonants and vowels, yeah. then we combine consonants and vowels, mm -hmm. then we go to the syllables, mm -hmm. and then after syllables, we form words, and we form bigger words. Mm -hmm. So okay. after this, mm -hmm. you see, like, if I say, mm -hmm. if I tell you, say, this is a, okay. right? Yes. And this is a? Okay, you know, you know, the, the, the yeah, time this is as we e. went to school, and now it's okay. different. So I'm, I'm a bit cautious in terms of how do I put this. This is E. <laughs> if I put okay. it together uh -huh. and I put this together here, what do I form? Thin. Thin. Yes. But first of all, I teach you this, and you understand. And ah. you can use, uh, we use more sensory uh -huh. approach. Uh -huh. So if I say thin, you say thin, and yeah. then you can either do it in the air uh -huh. or use it on the table oh, right. or trace it mm -hmm. and we can use we do this so many times mm -hmm. and then after we show you this mm -hmm. and you are able to do this and I can introduce another sound uh, like this one okay. uh, if I say it's a consonant blend mm -hmm. I say full mm -hmm. you say full uh -huh. and we form it mm -hmm. uh, you write it on the table uh -huh. you do it okay. and then we join it with we can join it like this and uh -huh. then we form a word yeah Okay, okay, it may be nonsense word. Yeah. yeah. Okay, no, sorry. No. It is like yes, this. the other way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Green. It may be nonsense word, but mm -hmm. then you are able to learn to, to blend. Yes. And uh, with that, mm -hmm. after we teach you that, mm -hmm. then this comes very handy. Mm -hmm. That um, it is. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Cab. Okay. Uh, I can't see that cock. Okay. So how do I do that? Check. Okay. Yes. yes. Sec. Sec. Uh, Sec. But uh, okay. there is a rule yeah. around this one that ah, is okay. taught. Like uh, when uh -huh. C is followed by E, it says C, not K. Uh -huh. But uh, when it is like that, it says K. Uh -huh. And this one, it says C. So there is a rule yeah. that uh -huh. you teach now. This is where we teach now the sounds of reading. Yeah. What sound and what, what letter... Uh, the letter, uh, mm. a specific letter, what sound does it make? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, what, yeah. and how many ways, like if I say I, mm. how many ways does, do I, yeah, do I write I? That. Yes. This one is I, okay. even if, if you put I, G, H, it is I, I like okay. in the word hi. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it, there is E at the end of a word, mm. then this one still will say I, not E, mm. 
Mm. Yeah, so those are the methods that we use. We also yeah. have magnetic board for those who do um, mm. mani more mani manipulation. Mm. So like, uh, I don't know whether this one is, you can see they are yes. all alphabets yeah, yeah, yeah. and they are different sounds. Mm -hmm. So a child will form mm. using this. Okay. So well, these are some of the methods that yeah. we use when for a, we are teaching specific okay. child. Uh -huh. and Could you hold the book just, yes, that way, yeah. so that you don't block the mic, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So let me give example, like I have taught you this. Mm -hmm. This is ILD, mm -hmm. ILD, and if I put, I want to form a nonsense word, <laughs> and um, like if I put Bo, what do I have? I have to to ILD. Okay. Right? Yes. My new lesson is I'll, but uh, before we had covered B. Uh -huh. So what do you do you have? Bild. So yeah. the child is able to blend even when it's not no, even the words that he has never seen, yeah. new words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and so this is called structured retracing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is a method that we use teaching children with dyslexia. Okay. You can say structured retracing mm -hmm. or uh, mouth sensory reading because you see we are using all the senses simultaneously, like mm -hmm. hearing, yeah. seeing, and touching yeah. at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and and that's very interesting because again, I, I, I mean, you'll not see this in, in a conventional school. It's, it's where it's like very fast paced. Grasp all these things, Saraka Raka. We got mm -hmm. we got things to do, mm -hmm. but this one is 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 very. You need to be patient and yes. and you know give this child give exactly. this child time, which I think is, is is pretty much important because, like we said, at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that all our children get you know um, you know the same quality of of education. Okay, so and and I think Philip Sao might be curious to understand uh, in terms of dyslexia and different professions, right? Maneuvering through all this and at the end of the day able to deliver as much as anybody else would and even performing much, much better. Mm. How is it for you? <coughs> uh, first of all, um, just to, to, to pivot on uh, mm. what Nancy has, I think what we need to understand first of all is uh, dyslexic people learn with, with, with playful, artistic mm. kind of way. Okay. Uh, we actually thrive with, 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 with uh, we, we learn through games. Mm. And uh, when I look at this, I'm, I'm like, I wish I had that. Yeah. Because I, I like, my, my mind likes to be challenged with, with different things. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like a narrative mm. kind of learning. Mm. And that's what, what we like in our, in, in, in our kind of system. Yeah. When you look at my sons, I play with them. I, I read books with them so to, to, to give them the confidence where mm. they read something I encourage them every day. So I think mm. it's very, very important to actually have this kind of a model in, in, our, in our normal school. Okay. Uh, back to your question about uh, uh, dyslexic thinking in, in, in professions. Mm. Um, I'm a high achiever. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have worked for nearly, I think, over 135 organizations globally. Mm. Oh, wow. okay. Some of the some of my consultancies, I have not even met people. I just met. Uh, they're like, "Hey, can you do this for us?" Mm. And uh, being dyslexic uh, makes you to be a risk, a risk taker, okay. as in you you, you don't fear. All right. uh, the, the, the tasks people fear, you, you actually go for them. Mm. And um, if you look at my career progression, um, I had a magazine when I was twenty six. Mm -hmm. I was an entrepreneur, entrepreneur when I was 20, uh, yeah. in my in my with no formal education. Okay. I, I I had a publishing firm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had to fold it because Kenyans don't ha have a poor reading culture. Mm -hmm. I joined the, the media just from scratch. Mm -hmm. I built myself as a, as a, as a digital consultant. Mm -hmm. Worked for Red Cross, and you can imagine Red Cross is, a, is, a, is an emergency response. Mm -hmm. Wo weaved my way to, to the emergency response of the country. Mm -hmm. I understand the, the emergency response me me mechanism. Mm -hmm. So from a professional level, these dyslexic people thrive better with challenges. Okay. We, we like things which, which challenge us. Uh, I can say like my career progression is, is like a game. Mm -hmm. If I finish one task, I can't go back to it. I want to get you go want to a go bigger for one. Another task. I want to okay. go to a bigger one. And, That's amazing. And um, yeah. I just want to say that uh, there are organizations which give us opportunities mm -hmm. without knowing. So mm -hmm. I think it's time organizations actually, and it's good that finally LinkedIn has actually uh, uh, put the dyslexic thinking as a skill. Mm -hmm. and that's something which, is, which our country here, HR people need, need, need to understand that mm -hmm. dyslexic thinking is a skill like any other. Mm -hmm. Like, I can say that uh, I'm creative, yeah. I'm highly innovative, mm -hmm. and I think out of the box. Okay. When you give me a solution, I will, I, I will analyze it and come up with a come solution with a which solution, is 360. Yeah. Okay. When you look at my career progression, 
I thrive better in a, in a multi-agency approach. Okay. Where there are different agencies. I, I, you I, need I, to, and, and I, I you actually sit different down. With different agencies, yeah. Uh, and with my mind, I can bring all, all them together in, mm. in, in, in one, one place. In one okay. second. All right. So, someone was saying, listen, dyslexia at the end of the day, this is a gift. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a gift. And most parents, many parents should actually appreciate um, you know, to, have, to have that as a child. It's not a curse, you know. Um, so many people would want to see it that way. Okay. So we have to bring this show to a close. We have very few minutes left. And then I think I'll start taking your passion, patting shots. Um, and I think I'll just start with you, Philip, now that you're raising a child who is dyslexic. You've gone through this, not a really good experience, um, you know, growing up people did understand you now you know better you know what what you're dealing with your child has the same how different are you raising them very quickly and of course what do you want to see improve and especially as a country and our education system uh, first of all um, uh, I have actually known, known their skills uh, I have two sons six and ten years mm -hmm. and both of them have different skill sets one is a geek he him is he's into apps and stuff so I am actually putting me in coding classes okay. and the older one is more of a journalistic he, he's into internet he wants to be on TikTok he wants to be on on YouTube. Yeah. So what I do is I'm actually teaching him to, to, to make videos. I'm introducing him to, to, to YouTubers and, and I actually take him to where I do. I give him photo uh, cameras and stuff. Mm -hmm. So technically I'm actually training him because okay. I understand what I went through. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, I make sure that his skills, I endorse him as a mm -hmm. parent. I give him that opportunity and I I'd expose him. And I'm, I'm actually present as a father. Okay. I've never beaten them. That's a good thing. We yeah. actually have a conversation where right. you want a phone, I buy you a phone. This, this, these are the rules. Screen time, uh, you know, and they have to go and play. Mm. These lucky people have so much energy. Mm. As a parent, give them that energy. Let them go swim, let them go cycle, let them go play, mm. and have time with them every day. So uh, mm. as a parent, and uh, we normally have days where we watch movies together, we play together, mm. we, we read together, we go for movies, we travel a lot. So mm. to them, I'm just a child. Mm. And uh, that's, 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 for you to parent a child, you just need to be a child. Sort of go to, to their level. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. And of course, Ndoli Quinter, for you, in terms of offering support, because you got that kind of support and, 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 and look at you now, you know, doing amazing things, um, you know, an entrepreneur. So what would you tell the parents who are watching us in terms of, you know, the kind of support that is needed for a child who's dyslexic? Um, what I would say to a parent, just like Philip said, um, you've got to go to somebody's level so you can understand them. Mm -hmm. And you've also got to have a lot of empathy. Mm -hmm. And um, when I first came to Kenya, mm -hmm. I realized, you know, h how big of a gap there mm -hmm. was with people with dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Like I could, like you would talk to somebody and say I'm dyslexic, and they'll be like, "What is what that?" Is like, that? yeah, yes. they 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 have no clue, or they think mm -hmm. that it's just it's like something that it's not. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why I started DQM Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, I just think parents just need to understand that we are not all the same. Mm -hmm. We all can't be doctors and lawyers and mm -hmm. scientists. You know, it, we can't. We mm -hmm. we we can't. Like mm -hmm. um, Philip is great. He uh, he seems that he can go and work for somebody and do certain things like for me I just can't I cannot take instructions if mm -hmm. you tell me to do something and I want to go left I just go left <laughs> so we're all very different we're yeah. very different I yeah we're all very different and mm -hmm. it's nice for like how I think I think um, how Philip is raising his children mm -hmm. it really reminds me takes me back to my childhood like my mum does not shout she does not shout. She doesn't beat. She has a conversation with you. She mm -hmm. asks you, why do you feel like that? Why are you acting like that? So it's really nice that we we start to bring people up who are functioning human beings mm -hmm. instead of like raising dysfunctional human beings. Yeah. And then we have more problems. We have drug abuse, alcoholism. We have a uh, lack of people doing things that they don't want to do. You know, mm -hmm. in life, the most important thing is to be happy. Absolutely. Happiness. I mean, we can't, we can't trade that for anything else. Yeah. All right. Right. Thank you very much, um, you know, Dolly. And of course, um, Nancy, for you, and especially in the education system, and now that we have CBC, um, right, have you seen like sort of like integration, um, and especially the different ways that you're, you know, teaching your, your, your learners, has, has that been incorporated as well in the CBC? Yeah, for me, uh, as an educator, and to the teachers and the, to, the, to the education system, is that uh, dyslexia is not going away. Mm. 
we have to have this student and one out of five students have dyslexia. Yeah. So you can imagine how many people or how many students in class are not taken care of. Mm -hmm. So the best thing that uh, the institution uh, education, uh, uh, Minister of Education can do is to have teachers trained on how to give support mm -hmm. to the gift because mm -hmm. if these gifts are t not taken care of, mm -hmm. they are the people in the street, mm -hmm. and they are the people who are bringing problems, mm -hmm. like uh, everybody has said it's mm -hmm. uh, having alcoholism, yeah. drug abuse, and uh, you find, like, there was a research done in uh, in U.S. sometimes and found that so many people in prison are the people with dyslexia because they have wow. not been given a lot a of attention and a yeah. chance. So we don't want to get there as a country. We want to train teachers on how to give support to these children and give them the opportunity that mm -hmm. uh, they require. Mm -hmm. Okay, CBC is doing well because there is not that much pressure, but I still there is still a gap because the teachers are not trained on how to give support to these children. So if the Minister of Education wants to embrace people with dyslexia, mm -hmm. it's first of all making the ground good really, for them yes. and the ground will only be level if the teachers are trained on how to give support. Mm -hmm. Okay, as district organization Kenya we do a lot mm -hmm. by training the teachers but also it is still very, it's very, very, very to the number yeah. Of and that we we have. can't reach everything. So, yeah. if the Minister of Education want to take this to a higher level, is to have this training in teacher training college. Yeah, yeah. And even the parents as well. I mean, don't you think some? You, not even some parents. All parents should. All sort parents of have should like, know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, if you as a parent, if a teacher is able to understand this, and then I have seen your child is not really doing well, mm -hmm. instead of uh, becoming defensive, because mm -hmm. what what we have is the teacher becomes defensive, the parent becomes, becomes defensive. defensive. So if you bring a child with uh, mm -hmm. dyslexia, mm -hmm. I'm not able to teach him or her. Mm -hmm. What I do is like, mm -hmm. you are not doing enough as a parent. So mm -hmm. if a teacher mm -hmm. is trained, we'll yeah. be able to have, uh, we'll be on a higher yes, level to explain to, to the yeah, parent that what is I have seen your child has A, B, C, D, yeah. and this is what is required. Okay, yeah. all right. And, uh, hey. Thomas, literally 10 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We're literally uh, overriding. Yes, what would you say to the parents? Very sure. Uh, parents, yeah. your child is not slow. Your mm -hmm. child is not a jarogwa. Not that you reach your child. Mm -hmm. Take care of your child. Now we have, we have internet and everything. Yeah. Like, please do research. Mm -hmm. Find out. Love your children. Mm -hmm. Don't lock them up in the houses. Mm -hmm. Get them out. There's help out here. There's help out here. Yes. And they're brilliant people, brilliant yes. minds, uh, we know, at the same time. So take care of your of your children. I'd like that. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming back today. Such an insightful conversation. And I hope that you've learned a lot from the conversation as well. So we have to close it here. My name is Winnie Lubembe. On behalf of an amazing team who put together and ensured that the show is a success, we say thank you and God bless. See you tomorrow morning, same time, same place, right here on your world but until then enjoy the rest of your viewing goodbye